Business Week tarafından 25 inovasyon üstadı arasında gösterilen Bilal Kafarani, Yıldız Holding Global İnovasyon Grup Başkanı ve North Star İnovasyon Şirketi'nin yönetim kurulu başkan yardımcısıdır. Global inovasyon yöneticisi olarak P&G, Kraft, Frito-Lay, PepsiCo International ve Coca-Cola'da çalıştı. Kafarani'nin liderliğinde geliştirilen ana inovasyon platformları arasında Coca-Cola'nın çığır açan Freestyle içecek ekipmanı, Glasso'nun Vitamin Water Uluslararası açılımı, Made Super Milky Pulpy, Simple Orange'ın yeni meyve suyu ürünleri, Frito-Lay'in Cheetos, Doritos ve Ruffles ürünlerinde doymuş yağ kullanımı yerine oleik yağlara geçişi, Sensations Artesana ve Sun Chips ürünlerinin geliştirilmesi, Kraft Natural Cheese, Jello, Tank, Philadelphia Cream Cheese, Toblerone, Milka ve Altois gibi markalarda pazar inovasyonları ve Craft Free etiketi altında çok başarılı yağsız birçok ürünle kategori inovasyonunu sayabiliriz. Aynı zamanda Bilal Kafarani, Jane Stevenson'la beraber sürüden ayrılmak, büyük liderler sürdürülebilir büyümeyi mümkün kılan inovasyonu nasıl yaratır adlı kitabında yazarıdır. Evet, bu yenileşim üstadını sizlere daha fazla bekletmeden hemen huzurlarınıza davet etmek istiyorum. Bilal Kafarani. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to this wonderful Congress. It's really an honor to be here and talk to you about uh, innovation and quality. Most importantly, innovation is here to stay, and it's our lifeline for our future. So as we talk about energy and sustainability, I think it's very important to know or to keep in mind uh, how the role innovation that plays in our future. So today, oh. today what I would like to do, talk a little bit about Yildiz Holding and the kind of innovation we're doing and then move into uh, the book uh, where we talk about innovations and breaking away and close it out with some ideas how to link innovation with quality. I am sure um, it's, there's no monitor here so I'm going to I'm sure everybody's familiar with my company Yildiz Holding. Uh, it employs about 30,000 people. It is in 50, we have 54 plants, 10 different countries with brands that most of you have brought up with that is built on high quality, low cost, and uh, the ability to uh, make sure everybody reach it with a big smile on their face. Innovations at Yildiz Holding has been uh, from the beginning, and there's many, many proof points here. Uh, our founding father, Sabri Bey, when he actually started making biscuits, one of the biggest innovation back then is how to distribute it. So there was a new distribution system that was uh, developed to take product from Ankara and bring it here to Istanbul. And um, it comes down in so many different forms, uh, finding R&Ds or actually doing packagings and um, products uh, in the industry, in the food industry. Today we have formed a company called North Star innovations and this is our lifeline to the future to build on the capabilities that we have today. Uh, North Star Innovation Company, it will uh, work with uh, proven science and it's going to connect academia with uh, the government and actually the private industry. So we believe that the ability to come up with a proven science uh, for the future is a collaboration between the three different um, uh, agencies here. And then when you have the proven science, you'll be able to take it into an incubation because if, if it was very difficult uh, or something new to the world, let's say, it had to be incubated and make sure that the science works at, that, at, the, at the large scales and most importantly, uh, prove that the market work, work needed and the consumer want, uh, wanted. Obviously, if you have a breakthrough in an invention or something that's very, uh, could link into an existing brand or existing product, then you'll be able to go into the industry and scale it up. In the end, um, the uh, North Star Innovation is going to take proven science, it's going to incubate it, provide it to the industry, and most importantly, it's going to have to be uh, done with commercial success. So this is what um, my company today is working on, is trying to link the past, our successful path and the innovation, 
delivering it to the consumers and our customers and inventing the future so that way we have um, uh, linked it to, together and in a much, much more sustainable way. Breaking Away is a book that I actually co-authored with Jane Stevenson. And as we went out to write the book, we have asked um, about 150 executives across planet Earth and from many, many different industries. And if you have the opportunity to read the book, you could see the list is a is, is major list. And by the way, this is how I met Murat uh, Ulkar, is when I was writing the book, I asked him, he was one of the people that I interviewed. And we asked uh, 150 executives across the industry to define innovation. And you will not believe it, or maybe you'll believe it, we have 150, 49 different definitions. So everybody's in the world have a different definition for innovation, and it creates all the uh, actual ambiguity around it, and no wonder there was a lot of confusion. Uh, especially the experience that I have with many, many companies I work where we sit down and talk about uh, innovations, and everybody leaves the room and come back with something completely different uh, when we come back and gather. So um, as Jane and I was thinking about this, we said maybe there is a way to start really uh, contribute to the world, and maybe we should have a framework that actually have people communicate uh, and be on the same page when they talk about innovation. So that inspires part of the inspiration on how to write the book. But by the end of the day, innovation is a mindset. It's, it's how you live your life, it's how you think, it's how you look at things, you know. Uh, and by the way, you can't live innovation at work and just go home and, and be not innovative. It it's, it's, should be part of the DNA. It's, it's about curiosity, it's about discovery, it's about always trying to um, find a ways to add value. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, so as we start talking, okay, mindset, what is mindset and how can mindset actually help here? Because this is so ambiguity, you need people in, in our life, we need metrics, we need to make sure we have something people could just measure uh, progress on innovation. So we come up with three metrics and I will ask you when you go back home or when you actually start thinking about innovation because I'm sure everybody here in this room think uh, about innovation uh, to take these metrics and see if it works. So we said there's three different metrics to uh, to see if you're really working on innovation. The first one, uh, the innovation has to be um, of uh, unique or differentiated. So if you're working on something today, ask yourself the question, is it unique and does it, is it, does it have a different kind of uh, touch and feel to it, okay? The second thing is, does it have a value? So if you're working on something that is differentiated or uh, have a different characteristic, does it have value? Meaning that is, are people willing to pay for it? Uh, and the last thing, does it have to be, uh, can you scale it up? So the combination of um, is it unique and does it have a value and can you scale it up is, are the three metrics we all should be using when we talk about innovations and this is how we can measure progress. So we start with mindset and then we'll move on into does it, is it unique, does it have value and can you actually scale it up so you could make uh, uh, money out of it. So in the end, um, uh, the, when it comes to innovation, I think the big difference between invention and innovation is the ability to take this invention and make a commercial business out of it. So as we start thinking about the definitions and the metrics, it became very obvious that there is different kind of innovations. And at the, as we were writing the book, we came up with seven different uh, type of innovation and we thought it was too much. So we start really challenging ourselves and get it down to a place where uh, people just, you know, we don't want to go more than four, four different kind of innovation. So we, we come up with transformation innovation and marketplace innovation, category innovation, and also operational innovations. So those four type of different innovations kind of cover uh, every innovations out there. But as we start researching and looking into the type of innovation, it becomes very obvious that innovations have a uh, leadership characteristic goes with it and also a culture. And um, very, very specifically, people who really do operational innovations, they are not really 
good at doing transformation innovations. And people who do marketplace innovation does, does not really do operational innovation. An operational innovation person is the, um, the person who is actually working in a plant, actually looking after productions and thinking about quality and cost. So th this is a different characteristic person than a transformation innovation where it's a scientist in the laboratory most likely trying to think how can I put the science together, I have a theories or I have a hypothesis I'm trying to do. Just to take it home, I'll talk about transformation innovations. Curiosity is really the key uh, adjectives of transformation innovation. And you could actually, whether you have your children's or the people you work with, you could see we all build in different ways and there's pe some people are more curious than others. I mean, I had a, a young boy and he's a grown up man now and he was driving us crazy because he is always asking questions. Why is this? Why is this? Why is this? And uh, somebody to be curious is actually is, is a characteristic of transformation innovation. After all, Newton was laying down underneath an apple tree when the apple fall on its head and he started thinking, why did that happen? And, and after that, he actually found uh, or discovered gravity. So this is all driven by curiosity and there's many, many examples out there to show you how important curiosity for transformation innovation. And I would say finding out about gravity changed our world or actually made our world where we are today. After usually curiosity, you go into discovery where you do research and you start to find out is, is my thinking right and can I actually make sure that, that what I'm talking about uh, correct or no, I need to go back and start asking more questions. And after research, you actually start building intellectual property and this is how you actually turn technology into a competitive advantage and, and hopefully you'll have proven science. The proven science is the key catalyst to deliver technology that consumer could enjoy, and the, deliver a product that the consumer could enjoy, not the technology, and also give you some competitive advantage. So a good examples of transformation innovation, obviously the internet, um, light bulb, um, you know, the invention of the car, uh, and I'm sure you could go on many, many uh, examples yourself. Uh, Thomas Edison, Edison have tried 1,001 time uh, in order to invent the electric light bulb that we actually use today. So curiosity, discovery, determinations are really the elements of transformation innovation. Category innovations are usually what they are the profitable one and, and they are built on transformation innovations. So uh, after you actually have the proven science and you have the transformation innovation, you start looking at global trends and consumer trends and how can you take these, uh, how can you take the advantage of transformation innovation and marry it with the consumer needs or and also can we just make money out of it? So transformation innovation, um, uh, the combination of transformation innovation, consumers and the uh, consumer trends and the uh, business case, this is what get us into category innovations. And those are the one that many, many example of this and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be brief here, but I wish uh, we could actually have a little dialogue on this. Uh, cell phones, for example, those are category innovations. The infrastructure of the highways, those are category innovation. Uh, engine search like Google's and what have you, those are all category innovation. They couldn't be here without the actual invention of the internet. Um, if we go back into uh, Benjamin Franklin who actually invented the electricity, uh, Thomas Edison could not have invented the uh, light bulb if without the electricity and so on and so on. Uh, so most of the time when you have transformation innovations, people really work really hard to prove the science and a lot of times, um, you know, they end up, they're not the most profitable. It's taking transformation innovation and convert it into category innovation where the actual profitability and you could build industry on that. Marketplace innovation is also built on transformation innovation and it's actually uh, built on an existing infrastructure, existing consumer base. Uh, and usually they have product that's in and out. And we see that in Turkey here a lot where you already have uh, product out there but you wanna make your operation more profitable. So it doesn't, it's, it's fast and you could get it out to the market uh, rather quickly 
A good example of this is ice cream industry does a really good job on that, where every year they introduce a new flavor, and I call it flavor of the month. Sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't it stick, but what most importantly is the, um, the using the existing infrastructure so it's not costly and it's quick to get it out on the market. Perhaps another good marketplace innovation ideas is in the cars. I mean, those of us as old as I am, when, we, um, uh, when, when I bought my first car, it only had a radio in it, AM, FM radio. But today it has CDs and you have televisions. Those are all marketplace innovations. And also the Japanese have figured out how to take the wing mirrors and make them more flexible. Because as they were looking at the junkyards and, and finding out that a lot of the mirrors have been clipped, the, one of their engineers came up with the idea, what if we make these mirrors flexible so that way when it hit a wall or somebody hit it, it'll be able to uh, be flexible and not damage the, uh, the mirror. So these are the kind of uh, innovation that comes to marketplace innovation. Operational innovation is also built on transformation innovation. And from there, it's really focused on efficiency and effectiveness. They focus on the customer and on the consumers. So operation innovation have a different mindset, as you could see, from the transformation innovation. And we are very successful here in Turkey, where we have many, many operation innovation examples that you could relate to. My favorite examples that I use is Michael Dell, when he actually was uh, thinking about how can I make laptop more affordable. He thought about a, a value chain system made in China, and he made computers, uh, very laptop, very affordable for five, six hundred dollars a laptop. And uh, it is focused internally. He was focused on efficiency. So he was not trying to prove that technology work. He did not need proven science. Uh, the technology was there is more about efficiency and effectiveness. Perhaps from the history, the most famous example that I use is Henry Ford. Henry Ford, when he actually uh, thought about having the car, he wants to make sure the cars are very, very uh, affordable. So he thought about the assembly line. So this is how the cars was produced very efficient and very effective. So in the first year when he produced the car, uh, he sold one million car for like, I think less than $2,000. Uh, obviously Henry Ford changed our life as we know it today because after that, uh, the roads were developed, the petrol stations, the hotels, the restaurants. It changed our community as we know it today because it was, he was able to connect people on holidays and be able to go see each other on the weekend. It's sort of what we do today with Facebooks and actually the internet where we're connecting live on Skype or on, on, on Facebook and we're able to see each other without even leaving our house. So these are some of the examples about operational innovation. It's about effectiveness. It's about how you actually uh, keep your costs down. But most importantly, and this is really, really critical, is about quality. You must have high quality to do this. The Japanese and the Chinese and the Indians, when they actually starting to, uh, entering the global market, and especially the Japanese, uh, and I use this example um, um, because it's, it's, there's a lot of learning from it. When they introduced their cars back in the 50s, uh, the cars could not even last. I mean, you just drive a car and it was broken, the tires, the engine, and they have to regroup. And they understood uh, the hard way, unfortunately, that they need to have quality cars in order for people to actually buy them. And, uh, and they have to be affordable. And since then, they took on the world with very reliable cars, high quality, and very uh, price competitive with everybody else. So quality play a major role in operational innovation because it's so easy to take costs out and you could derail yourself from the scope of the projects and become very, very efficient. But it's, you need to make sure, never, never lose sight of the consumer proposition, the business proposition, and deliver that quality that the consumer needs day in and day out. These are the uh, quick rundown for the book. I hope you'll have a chance to read the book, or uh, if you haven't, uh, if, if, if you read it, maybe you could see the many, many case studies that we actually uh, enjoyed as we spoke to the CEOs uh, across the globe and we talked to them about the framework of uh, breaking away. They adopted it, and most of the time they invited me and Jane back to talk to their team, and they offer case studies how you could take this framework of innovation 
and into real life examples. So there's many, many case studies there. And I've been lucky, it's been translated uh, in Turkey here, and we launched it in April. And in two weeks, I'm on my way to China because the, uh, it's going to be published in China, uh, translated into Chinese. So now let me try to link, you know, you're probably wondering what, what's the role of innovation with quality? So I wanted to make some uh, points on quality and see how the role of innovation uh, is critical uh, in, the, in our quality life day in and day out. So I think there's something, uh, what, what sells brands and products, and a brand is a promise actually until the consumer goes out and buy it and experience the product. And only then the consumer will decide Yes, I got my money's worth. I actually bought the product that people like. Uh, I mean, I like, I'm gonna buy it again and again. What makes the consumer comes in every day and buy the product again and again is the co consistent delivery, and that's the quality. So I could innovate uh, the perfect innovation that everybody likes, but if I can consistently deliver it every day with the quality that people that expect I will be out of business. So imagine if you take your iPhone or your iPad or your computer today and one day it works and the other day it does not work or the application, you know, physically the, the phone is not able to deliver on that commitment, you'll walk away from that. Even though we love it today, you'll look for the next alternative. What prevent that from happening is the quality and the consistent delivery of that innovation so the consumer continue to enjoy the features that they bought the product for. At Yildas Holding, we are really focused from, from, the, from the day the company was found on how can we deliver the highest quality product at the lowest cost. So we're focusing on the product, we're focusing on the consumers, we're focusing on the customers, and most of all, our um, Sabri Bay have always had the vision, he wants to put a smile on everybody's face when they taste the product. So this is our vision, this is what aspire to in every product we do. This is what we tell our employees on the, on the line, that this product have to delight somebody that when they eat it, they're gonna smile because of the experience. So um, what is really critical too, there is four different pillars when it comes to sustainable quality. Because doing quality every once in a while is doable, is how do you do sustainable uh, quality day in and day out. And you need to make sure that quality is part of your DNA and part of your culture. Everybody's living it. It's kind of, it's like I said at the beginning, innovation is a mindset and quality is a mindset. So those two are really linked. And you want to be, be, the number one uh, thing is you need to make sure that your product is produced consistently and then you need to make sure that the processes operating in the plant correctly and also you need to link the value chain from procurement all the way to the refrigerator of the consumer if the product was refrigerated. The value chain does not stop at the warehouse of the plant and it does not start necessarily with the suppliers. It have to go all the way to the, uh, to the soil and up to the fork where the consumers actually eat in it. That is the value chain. And so I encourage you not to make the mistake of thinking the value chain is what you control. I think it's far more difficult to make sure that your quality is reaching throughout the value chain from the ground all the way to the fork in the consumer's mouth. And a critical success factor, uh, the last pillar I saved it for last because I think it's important, is people. We could put all the um, processes and all the checkpoints in place, but the people have to really own the quality across the value chain in the company. And quality is not a uh, one person's job. It's everybody's job. It's looking at the packaging, looking at the, at the machinery, uh, the person who actually cleaned the equipment, the person who actually delivered the equipment. So it's, it's very important that the people who actually uh, doing, uh, to, to train the people and make sure that they actually have a quality mindset. And with that, it should come pride. You know, so people who really producing the product uh, they need to understand the value proposition that the consumer is looking for. And they, therefore, everybody needs to take a part of what they do to make sure that quality and that value proposition the consumer is buying, uh, buying every day or experiencing is delivered all the time. 
So now you might say, great, okay, so it's about people, it's about product. What is really the key principles here? And this is what I want you to really take home with you. The specifications. You need to actually specify for your organization with the clarity what kind of agriculture product we're going to buy, how you're going to process it, where do you need to store it, what happened to it uh, after three, four, five, six months. So it's very important to make sure you have clear specification, not built on just operational capability. It has to be built on delivering the consumer proposition throughout the value chain. Many, many times you might find that your infrastructure or your plant is not able to deliver what the consumer wants. So that means you have to invest in capabilities or training the people how to actually deliver this product. Consumer specification should be the only specification put in, the, in, in, in operation, not what we think it is really important to deliver or what can we afford to sell. It's a fine line between uh, producing a very, very cheap product or producing the product that the consumer wants. So the consumers, um, I mean, a good example, uh, Michael Dell, when he actually produced uh, the Dell laptop, it was cheap. Everybody loves it. And he had it in his mind that $500 is what the consumer is willing to do. And Steve Jobs came back, and we're all buying now uh, Apple computers for $1,500 and $2,500. So the consumer's um, needs and the consumer's um, uh, expectation should be always measured against uh, the cost and the quality. You're not going to be able to produce, uh, uh, uh, have growth coming to the operation if you're actually just taking cost away. Growth has to all be always from the top line and the bottom line. We have to do both. Um, so th these are uh, important lessons that if you actually look to many, many case studies, you'll see that whenever we lose track of what is the consumer proposition, you're going to end up with product that you could sell once or twice, but they're not going to buy it every single time. The next thing is you have to have tools in hand. You have to have really um, auditing going on. So you, one of the most wonderful things about successful quality organization is they have, they have the actual specification, but they also have a check and balance. So there's independent auditing going on for the product pulled out of the market and measured against the gold standards, uh, having a, a third party come in and audit the plant capability to make sure that they're really capable of doing what they need to do. Because after all, if you have consumer specifications and then you have the uh, plant not capable to do it or 80% of the time produce the product that you want, what happened to the 10%, 20% uh, of the time? At Yield is Holding, our vision is to make sure that there's zero defects. Imagine that, zero defect. Everybody's eyes on, we need to make sure that the product produced all the time within the consumer specification. That means that a, you know, the engineers looking to make sure the plant is capable, the people who are actually making the product make sure it's within specifications. There's all kind of um, actually ways to measure how good are you producing the product, like your rework, rejects, um, uh, product could play a major role here to give you direct input and feedback on how does uh, how you're doing against your quality goal. And the last piece is about uh, the team and building the capabilities here. So you, I can't emphasize um, uh, how much this is critical. I'm sure most of my uh, scientific committee here and technical folks that uh, in the audience could relate to. Training, training, training, and make sure people understand where you're going, inspire them into the vision that you've put ahead of them, and make sure they understand the proposition because every mind could think very creatively to make sure that the product uh, finds solution that is really compatible. And most of the time, solution is not necessarily solved by money. Most of the time, solutions is solved by a very creative and innovative way to make the product the highest quality at the lowest cost. The next few slides, you know, so I talk about the principles. You must have a specification, uh, and I wanted to throw this as a, as a teaser. You must have a specification that say, this is the green product that I want to produce, just like the traffic lights. 
and then this is yellow. If you're producing product within these specifications, that means you need to stop and fix the operation. And then you have red. If you are in this zone, you have to stop the line, stop the plant, and take corrective actions. This is the kind of specification everybody have to have in operation because you need to walk the talk on specification. Otherwise, if you say, oh, it's okay, I'm running behind on production today and the customer want it, uh, it's, it's in the range, go ahead and do it. That's the wrong culture. But if you put down specification that clearly say this is green and this is you are leaving the green area, which is yellow, uh, stop and fix it, and this is absolutely don't ship it. You really have a culture of being very, very serious about quality. And obviously, we talked about the auditing, which is, again, uh, pulling the product from the market. It's okay to taste it. It's okay to look at the analytical lab. Most importantly, you need to have the consumer to taste the product and make sure they can put it against the gold standard, and then they will give you the right feedback whether the product needs to be adjusted or is it functioning the way you want it to function. And finally, it's about the independent artists. We talked about this. There's all kind of organization out there where you could bring them to your plants and they actually audit and give you uh, feedback on this. So it is all, it will all come together for sustainable quality. If you actually take all these feedback, you have the specification, you actually taking corrective actions with the uh, value chains and you are training your people. All this, a lot of hard work will provide sustainable uh, quality. And most importantly, going back to the innovation part, whatever innovative way that you have, you deliver it day in and day out for the consumers. So thank you very much, and I appreciate you listening to me. Um, and uh, have a great Congress. Mr. Katharani, uh, will you please wait for a while? Uh, we will invite one more uh, Hamdi Duan to the stage. Sayın Hamdi Duan'ı tekrar sahneye davet ediyoruz. Kendisi Bilal Katharani'ye bir hediye sunmak istiyor. Bu, ar bu arada salondan soru alamadık. Ama soru sormak isteyen misafirlerimiz varsa sanırım mikrofon ulaştırabileceğiz. Evet, Sayın Hamdi Duan, Hilal Kafarani'ye bir hediye sunmak istiyor. Arkadaşlarımız hemen yardımcı olacaklar zannediyorum. Evet, sanırım giriyor hediyemiz. Arkadaşlarımız unutmuş olabilirler, evet. Thank you very much. Evet, tekrar teşekkür ediyoruz. Evet, değerli konuklar hemen bir iki notu aktarayım sizler dağılmadan önce. Yaşanabilir gelecek konusunda yoğunlaşacağınız dolu dolu iki gün ve yoğun bir içerik var önünüzde. E, bu iki gün içerisinde kongrede birçok konu başlığı tartışılacak ve konuşulacak. E, hemen aktaralım. E, kısa bir aramız var. Kahve molasından sonra paralel oturumlara geçilecek. Öğle yemeğimiz saat 13-14.45 arası kongre merkezinin içinde bulunan yemek alanında verilecek. E, yemek alanına ulaşmak için e, zeminde yönlendirmeler var. Ayrıca görevlilere de e, sorabilirsiniz. Ayrıca kahve molaları ve öğle yemeği sonrasında kalite ve yönetim sistemleri sergisini ziyaret etmenizi de tavsiye ediyoruz. Bu sergi sırasında da bazı çekilişlerle hediye kazanma fırsatı bulabileceksiniz. Verimli bir kongre günü dinliyoruz efendim. Tekrar birlikte olmak üzere sizleri uğurluyoruz şimdilik. Thank you.